Καλησπέρα. Ε, θα συνεχίσουμε την τρίτη ενότητα για τα, την παρουσίαση που κάνουμε για τα καύσιμα. Εδώ θα μελετήσουμε, βασικά, θα μελετήσουμε τη βασική θεωρία της καύση. Θα δούμε πώς γίνεται η καύση. Ε, αποκτά ένα ενδιαφέρον. Είναι και ένα καλό, μια καλή ουσιαστική ενότητα που θα δούμε και λίγο τη θεωρία του το μαθήματο το οποίο αναφέρεται στη τρίτη τάση που διδάσκεται η καύση, η θεωρία της καύσης στο παραγωγή εργαζόμενο. Βέβαια, όπως έχουμε πει, όλα τα μαθήματα γίνονται στα αγγλικά. The learning objectives of this chapter are that the learner will know the requirements for a combustion process to occur, have a basic understanding of the combustion process, and have a basic understanding of the chemistry of combustion. Εδώ, όπως βλέπετε, θα μελετήσουμε, έχουμε δύο ζυγαρία, ουσιαστικά είναι η αναλογία του αέρα, του οξυγόνου βασικά, και του καυσίμου, υδρογονάθρακας είναι, με την περίοδο του θείου. Το θείο βέβαια είναι απαραίτητο, γιατί το έτσι φωτιάς έχει, δηλαδή ήταν παλιά, ήταν σημαντικό για κάποιο λόγο, βέβαια έχει τα μειονεκτήματά του. Εδώ είναι ο σογεμετρικός λόγος ε, καύσης, πως ήταν το αέρα και τα λοιπά του καύσιμου. Θα, θα μελετήσουμε λίγο τη θεωρία της καύσης, πως γίνεται μέσα στη μηχανή και νομίζω ότι είναι αρκετά ενδιαφέρον. Συνεχίζουμε. Essentially, there are three elements required for combustion and you should be familiar with them from your firefighting training. These form the fire triangle showing the relationship between fuel, oxygen and heat. Ε, όσοι έχετε πάει σωστικά, θα έχετε μάθει για το τρίγωνο της φωτιάς. Βέβαια δεν είναι τρίγωνο, τετράγωνο, έχει μπει και μια εκτινοβολία. Βέβαια εδώ μιλάμε για το τρίγωνο. Δηλαδή για να υπάρχει φωτιά πρέπει να συνεπάρχουν τρία πράγματα. Αν κάποιο από αυτό εκλείψει, η φωτιά δεν υφίσταται. Και αυτό βέβαια το μαθαίνουμε σωστικά για να μπορούμε να τη σβήνουμε. Είναι το οξυγόνο, ο αέρας, είναι το καύσιμο και εδώ είναι η θερμότητα. Η θερμότητα αφορά το κάθε σώμα για να μπορέσει να, να δημιουργήσει φλόγα, πρέπει να φτάσει σε μια συγκεκριμένη θερμοκρασία. Γι' αυτό και όλα τα σώματα, όλα τα, συγγνώμη, όλα τα υλικά, έχουν τη θερμοκρασία ανάφλεξη, η οποία είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντική για να δημιουργηθεί η φλόγα. Η, φω, η θερμότητα δηλαδή που θα αναπτυχθεί λόγω τη καύση. Άρα είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντικά να γνωρίζουμε τι προκαλεί αυτή τη θερμική ενέργεια και θα μα βοηθήσει βέβαια αργότερα και να, προφυ, να μπορούμε να προφυλαχθούμε σε περίπτωση που δημιουργηθεί κάποιο σοβαρό πρόβλημα λόγω πυρκαγιάς. Άρα νομίζω ότι είναι, αυτό το κομμάτι του μαθήματος είναι πάρα πολύ ενδιαφέρον. We have seen earlier that the various fuels used on board ship include liquid hydrocarbon fuels and on a few ships, gas. The fuels that we will consider here are marine distillate and residual fuels. These fuels cannot be burnt in the liquid form and it is necessary to treat and process these fuels prior to combustion. The fuels must be delivered to the engine cylinder or boiler furnace in a way which generates vapor. This vapor can be ignited if the other combustion conditions of oxygen and heat are present. It is the purpose of the fuel system to achieve this. To allow combustion of fuel to take place, there must be oxygen present. Oxygen is supplied to the combustion chamber by filling it with air, the air being referred to as combustion air. For most modern diesel engines, this is done by a turbocharger, which forces compressed air into the engine cylinder. For a steam boiler, the combustion air is usually supplied by a forced draft fan. The amount of air supplied, along with other requirements, will dictate how good the combustion will be. You will have seen black smoke from the funnel when the engine or boiler is first started. This is usually due to the fact that insufficient air is being supplied at this stage for complete combustion. When the theoretical, ideal amount of air to give complete combustion is supplied and mixed with a quantity of fuel, The mixture is referred to as the stoichiometric mixture. We will say more about this later in this chapter. 
Βέβαια εδώ θα, θα, κάνω, θα κάνω πάσα από το μαύρο καπνό που βγάζουν ε, όταν ξεκινάει με μηχανή και ειδικά το καζάνι. Γι' αυτό και σε προσωπικό το καζάνι το ξεκινάμε με το δίζελ. Αυτό είναι γιατί κάψει ο αέρα, η περίσσια αέρα μέχρι να δημιουργηθούν οι συνθήκε κάψη. Ε, ε, περνάει κάποια χρονική στιγμή. Οπότε έχουμε αυτά να φλέξει. Έχουμε και άλλε ιδιότητε σχέση με τη βενζίνη. Ε, είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντικό και ειδικά ο Λέβητα όταν ξεκινάει. Να ξεκινάει με κάποιε συγκεκριμένε ηθίκε είναι ένα πολύ δύσκολο κομμάτι του Λέβητα. Όλα αυτά βέβαια θα τα αναλύσουμε στο ποσομείο. Ότι έχουμε πει κάποια πράγματα. Όσοι παρακολουθείτε το κανάλι, μπορεί να μπείτε κάλεσα και στο ποσομείο. Τι να δείτε κάποια πρακτικά πράγματα. Ε, συνεχίζουμε λίγο με τη θεωρία. Even when oxygen and fuel are present as a combustible mixture, combustion cannot take place until sufficient heat is present to ignite the mixture. Ignition can be achieved by raising the temperature of a combustible mixture to its flash point and providing an external means of ignition, for example a spark. Ignition can also be achieved by raising the temperature of the mixture above its self-ignition temperature. Diesel engines rely on the temperature of the air charge in the cylinder after compression being above the self-ignition temperature of the fuel to provide the ignition source. They are classed as compression ignition engines. Combustion in a diesel engine is a non-continuous process. Steam boilers rely on an external ignition source, such as a spark igniter or pilot flame. Once ignition takes place, the combustion will be continuous as the main flame vaporizes the fuel and heats it to above the flash point. Click on the buttons to read the definitions for two of the terms used here. The flash point of a fuel is the temperature at which the fuel will give off combustible vapors which can be ignited by an external ignition source in the presence of air. The combustion may stop if the ignition source is removed if the fuel is just at the flash point. A slightly higher temperature, the fire point, is that temperature which will allow combustion to continue even when the ignition source is removed. The self-ignition temperature of a fuel is the temperature at which a combustible mixture will ignite without an external source of ignition. It is also referred to as the auto-ignition temperature or the temperature of spontaneous combustion. Νομίζω ότι εδώ φάνηκε η διαφορά μεταξύ του σημείου ανάπλυση και του σημείου ανάπλυση με τη βοήθεια κάποιου, ε, ένα, ένα, με, με κάποιο τρόπο ε, που θα το πω, ε, δημιουργία φλόγα. Ε, αυτό είναι κατανοητό. Βέβαια, η θεωρία είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντικό να κατανοήσουμε τι έννοιε ανάπλυση, κάψη, αυτανάπλυση, γιατί αυτό θα μα βοηθήσει από μεθαύριο στι παραμετροποιήσει και να μπορούμε να κατανοούμε και να. Να κατανοούμε τι ενδείξει που θα πρέπει τα διαγράμματα όταν είμαστε στο μηχανοστάσιο για να μπορούμε να επεμβούμε στην κατάλληλη στιγμή. We have referred to the term combustible mixtures in the previous pages, and now it is time to say more about them. A mixture of fuel and air will only be combustible if the fuel is vaporized and the ratio of fuel to air is within the flammable range. It is easier to vaporize the fuel if the surface area exposed to the heat source is large compared to the mass of fuel. It is therefore necessary to break the fuel up into very small droplets. This process is referred to as atomization. In a diesel engine it is desirable that the whole volume of the combustion chamber is used. It is therefore necessary to distribute the fuel throughout the combustion chamber. This distribution is referred to as penetration. The fuel and air must be mixed so that the fuel and oxygen are evenly distributed to ensure that combustion is as complete as possible. To achieve this, it is necessary to create the correct mixing conditions, in particular to control the air movement or turbulence. Click on the buttons to learn more about some of the terms we have just used.
Atomization is the term used to describe the breakup of a liquid fuel into very small droplets, which, when mixed with air, form a mist. In this state, the surface area of the fuel is much greater than that of the solid liquid stream, and the fuel will therefore heat up rapidly and vaporize in the hot cylinder or boiler furnace. The purpose of the diesel engine fuel injection valve is to generate conditions for atomization to take place as the fuel enters the combustion chamber. Similarly, a boiler burner tip will help create the conditions for atomization, often using compressed air or steam to assist the process. Penetration can be thought of as the distance travelled by the fuel once it enters the combustion chamber or furnace. Insufficient penetration will lead to the fuel-air mixture being over-rich in the vicinity of the injector or burner tip, leading to incomplete combustion. Excess penetration may lead to fuel reaching cylinder components or furnace walls. Large fuel droplets tend to penetrate further than small droplets. Over atomization may therefore lead to lack of penetration. Turbulence is the term used to describe movement of air in the cylinder prior to and during the combustion process. The movement has to be predictable if correct mixing of air and fuel is to be achieved. Air turbulence is generated in the diesel engine cylinder by the shape and position of scavenge ports and valves, and the shape of the piston crown and other combustion chamber components. In the boiler furnace, this is achieved by the swirl plate of the burner unit. Correct penetration of fuel into turbulent air will ensure good distribution and an even mixture. When the three elements, fuel, oxygen and heat, are present in the right conditions, then ignition will occur and combustion will follow. The whole purpose of the combustion process is to convert the chemical energy that the fuel contains into heat energy, which can then be converted into useful work and power. In the diesel engine, the released heat energy from the combustion of the fuel and the associated pressure rise act directly on the piston to produce the power to turn the crankshaft and in turn drive a propeller or other equipment. In a steam boiler, the released energy is used to generate high energy steam which is normally used to power a turbine. We have already been introduced to the term stoichiometric mixture earlier in the chapter. Click on the button to learn more about these mixtures. We have already stated that a stoichiometric mixture is the mixture of fuel and air that would theoretically result in complete combustion of the fuel. The amount can be calculated by considering exactly how much air is required for the complete combustion of each of the elements within the fuel. For the fuels that we are considering, the main elements will be hydrogen, carbon and sulphur, although other elements and contaminants are also taken into account. In practice, however, the combustion process requires more air than this ideal minimum. In the diesel engine cycle, the short period available for the whole process of fuel injection, mixing with air, ignition and combustion means that complete combustion is impossible. For the fuel combustion to be as complete as practically possible, air in excess of the stoichiometric amount is needed. This may be as much as 30% more than the ideal minimum. In a steam boiler furnace, it is easier to mix the fuel and air at entry, and a much smaller amount of excess air is required. Νομίζω ότι εδώ πέρα είναι κατανοητό η στοιχειομετρική διαφορά, η περίσσια αέρα που χρειάζεται σε σχέση με το diesel περίπου 30%, ενώ στο Levita είναι 5%. Αυτό είναι για να πετύχουμε έως το δυνατόν την τέλεια κάψη. The heat energy equivalent released during combustion of the hydrogen and carbon in marine fuel is the major source of energy for both the diesel engine and the steam boiler. 
we normally refer to the amount of energy equivalent as the higher or lower value of the heat of combustion, which is measured in megajoules per kilogram. Taking into account the heat energy required to produce water vapor, gives the lower value of heat of combustion for those substances where water vapor is a product of combustion. The other elements found in marine fuels have much lower energy equivalents than hydrogen and carbon. As the concentration of these other elements increases, the overall heat of combustion of the fuel reduces. Marine fuels typically have an energy equivalent of between 39 and 42 megajoules per kilogram. Click on the buttons to learn more about the combustion of hydrogen and carbon. Hydrogen has an energy equivalent for the higher value of heat of combustion of approximately 142 megajoules per kilogram, and a lower value of approximately 121 megajoules per kilogram. The chemical equation for the complete combustion of hydrogen in oxygen shows the products of combustion are water vapor and heat. Carbon has an energy equivalent for heat of combustion of approximately 32.8 megajoules per kilogram. As no water vapor is produced during combustion of carbon, the higher and lower value are the same. The chemical equation for the complete combustion of carbon in oxygen shows the products of combustion are carbon dioxide and heat. Sulfur has an energy equivalent for heat of combustion of approximately nine megajoules per kilogram. The chemical reaction of sulfur with an oxidant can produce a number of different oxides of sulfur, generally referred to as SOx. For our purposes, we will consider these as simple reactions during combustion. The chemical equation for the complete combustion of sulfur in oxygen. Can be shown in stages and depends on the amount of oxygen available. The products of combustion are sulfur dioxide and heat, or sulfur trioxide and heat. When combined with water or water vapor, the sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide can also form either sulfurous or sulfuric acid. These products contribute to acid rain when present in exhaust emissions. Μια παρατήρηση αυτή η ιδιότητα είναι πολύ καυστικό όπως έχουμε πει. Το είχαμε πει και για τις λουμπρικέτες. Δημιουργεί το θυϊκό οξύ, το οποίο ο θυϊκό οξύ είναι το βιτριόλι, το οδηγόμενο βιτριόλι, το οποίο ουσιαστικά είναι διαβροτικό. Γι' αυτό και στις δίχρονες μηχανές, ειδικά στις δίχρονες μηχανές, έχουμε τα κελιδρέλαια για να μπορούμε να προστατεύουμε το μέταλλο από τη διάβρωση που δημιουργεί αυτό το αποτέλεσμα. Βέβαια και αυτό με κάποιες προδιαγραφέ. The heat energy equivalent. Sulfur has an energy equivalent for heat of combustion of approximately. We have seen that the products of complete combustion for pure hydrocarbon fuels would be only water and carbon dioxide if we used the stoichiometric amount of pure oxygen. However, the combustion process is not supplied with oxygen directly, but with atmospheric air. Which contains a high proportion of nitrogen, as well as other trace elements. Also, marine fuels often contain sulfur, which will burn and produce its own products of combustion. Obviously, any other elements that are present in the fuel, and any excess lubricating oil, will produce other products of combustion. All of these additional products will be emitted to the atmosphere in the exhaust gas. Some of these emissions are regarded as atmospheric pollutants, which are harmful to the environment and are considered undesirable components of the exhaust gas. 
Recent legislation, particularly the introduction of Marpol Annex VI, regulates the permitted levels of these undesirable components in exhaust gas emissions. Click on the button to find out more about diesel engine exhaust emissions. The exhaust gas from a diesel engine will contain all of the expected products of combustion, plus a high amount of the excess air not used during the combustion process. In addition to those already discussed, there will also be products of incomplete combustion. Since complete combustion is impossible to achieve in practice, then combustion of marine fuel results in the formation of other products of combustion. These will include unburnt hydrocarbons, unburnt carbon in the form of soot, and partly burnt carbon as carbon monoxide. There will be incomplete combustion of some of the elements in the fuel, resulting in emission components as shown in the list. We have already seen that sulfur in the fuel leads to the formation of oxides of sulfur, referred to as SOX. The nitrogen in the combustion air can form a number of different oxides, which are referred to as NOx. The NOx and SOx can combine with moisture in the atmosphere to produce acids, which contribute to acid rain. Non-combustible elements, such as ash and particulate matter, originating from the fuel or air supply, will pass through the combustion process unchanged or partly oxidized. All of these will pass out with the exhaust gas and can be hazardous to health and the environment. Νομίζω έγινε σαφής για τα καυσαέρια. Τι ακριβώς γίνεται; Εδώ είδαμε δύο κομμάτια το οξύδιο του αζότου και το οξύδιο του θείου, τα οποία είναι υπεύθυνα για τρύπα του οζότος και η ότσινη βροχή. Και αυτό και έχουν παρθεί τα μέτρα για να μπορεί γενικά τα μέτρα που όσον αφορά την πέρα του καυσίμου. Γιατί νομίζω ότι το σημαντικό κομμάτι βρίσκεται εδώ. In this chapter, we have looked at the basic requirements for combustion of marine fuels by considering the elements that make up the fire triangle. We have also looked at the basic chemistry of combustion for the main elements normally found in marine fuels and the products from combustion of each. We have also discussed the relationship between the air and fuel to form a combustible mixture and the condition of the fuel for ignition and combustion to be possible. We have also considered the environmental impact of burning hydrocarbon fuels, particularly in diesel engines. Try the questions in the following self-test to check your understanding so far.